Hey everyone, it's Maria from Je Dois Le Papier. I am back with a second altered book flip through. This is the second of three books that I've recently altered. They're all green and I've left them all pretty raw or pretty grungy, meaning I did not cover them with the fabrics. I did mend them. I did go through and um, enhanced their spines. I enhance their page count <laughs> and um, in most cases I pretty much tried to restore or at least maintain some of the storyline as much as possible. So this one is called Freckles and it's a story about an Irishman, a little waif of an Irishman who tries to look for work and he is actually hired by a forestry owner despite his small size. He loves angels and he falls in love with an angel so on the cover you'll find this this is actually a mother of pearl button flipped over. This button represents the main character, Freckles. This angel button here is uh, to represent his true love or his angel love. And then this key is a key to the forest that he maintains. The spine, I did extend it. I wanted to actually try to reuse the spine as much as possible. So I just actually sewed or hand stitched it to some fabric um, and then hand stitched both the cover and, um, and back cover to the fabric spine itself. So this is, I believe, a catch stitch. This was an attempt at a swing stitch, but I wanted to go back and reinforce it, so I had to add a little bit of ribbon trim. The spine's about two inches now, a curved spine, hollow. There's over 248 page bundle because I do want this to be an art journal. So the first journal that you saw, the wildflowers, pressed wildflowers, that was really an altered book to keep your pressed flowers in, not really so much an art journal intentionally. But this one I did want to be mixed media, could be sketching, for doodling, for writing in the pages, for painting. I even uh, threw in a little bit of embroidery. I did make a little ephemera kit like I just mentioned with Vintage letters, you know, just because the script handwriting is so beautiful. If you, if you can see that, hopefully the sun isn't blasting the rest of that letter. Vintage ledger paper from the UK that I just recently received. But I'll go through this in more detail. I don't know why I'm holding it up like that. This picture represents the family that actually ended up taking care of Freckles as well as his um, main boss who gave him a chance. So, oh, and if this looks familiar, you could tell that I was probably watching Heather from Ruby and Pearl XO's video of Angie's um, gift to her, her, what did she call it, and um, like a, um, what do you call it, happy mail, Angie's happy mail, and she did this with a blue-gray blue ribbon over a light blue cover, and I just loved it. Um, I don't have that kind of silk ribbon, but I do have this French, uh, it's not taffeta, actually this is silk, French silk from Miab, a brown paper parcel. And since this is a very grungy book, I thought I'd keep it pretty patina um, throughout the book. Most of the book is actually made up of really vintage and or antique pages or the original book pages from the, from the storyline. All right, so I'll go ahead and pause this and get this open for you. So before I start with the flip through, I just wanted to show um, a really zoomed in photo of this angel medallion. This came from Heather, Ruby and Pearl, as well as this key, just because it, it's so funny how perfectly this little um, lady, etched lady in metal, has flowers in her hair and looks like a char the character of the angel in the book that you'll see. So just wanted to show you that. Okay, so altered book, that means I do try to follow my hollow spine, which I pretty much do on all my books, but instead of using the muslin that I use, I do use fabric just like in traditional um, junk journal methods where we sew it to a fabric floating spine. This one happens to be a French linen from Mia, but also at a brown paper parcel. I love it because it's so thick and strong and it really carries the weight of any type of art mixed media. Six signatures all sewn in and a lot of free-floating vintage and or antique papers just to, to get your artistic um, ideas flowing. Zoom in just a little bit more. Um, I did line it with the 
two layers of locked up paper. This is actually locked up paper that I purchased here in the US. It's very different from locked up that I can purchase directly from um, to, uh, not Tibet, but either Vietnam or um, where's the original locked up paper? Um, I'll think of it and throw it up on the screen. Anyway, I lined it twice just to give it strength. Instead of adding book corners or any buttons to strengthen the corners, I just used the paper and my favorite line coat glue, book glue. This fabric is from France and it resembles bark to me. So I went ahead and just used it as a pocket in front with a few labels so that you could use it. And it's her botan vintage botanical. And I received, I mentioned in another video, that I just received these vintage and antique journals or ledgers from the UK, got them off eBay, and I started printing to this really heavier, almost cotton rag-like paper. And that is just, I've never been able to print like this before, so this is stunning. And then I back it with a little bit of the old um, funeral or um, death announcement paper, just because of the black from the cover of the book. I love that. And then a little bit of vintage wallpaper from Jubilee Flea. That's the first page. I did leave the uh, inscription on the cover because I think it's the sweetest message. To Amelia Maddie, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year for you is the wish of Mrs. Earl Glenn, December 25th, 1922. So I think that's so sweet. It is actually a sweet love story. I would call it maybe a preteen or coming of age story almost. Um, there's a little bit of fabric from uh, Aline in France. I will link everybody that I've used below and make sure to do that. Sorry if I'm talking a little fast. I feel like in the hotel, the Wi-Fi is so slow, so I'm trying to not only capture light to videotape, but also to limit my editing from, from the hotel room or from the hotel itself. A little bit of embossing on antique paper. Um, this is from Marie at French Manufacturer. I embossed it because I actually got myself one of those giant, whatchamacallit, the uh, giant Sizzix machines, and I did a little bit of, of die cutting as well. In fact, it was some wallpaper, and this is very fragile, and so actually once you get it, you might want to reinforce it with more ledger paper in the back. But a little bit more of that bark fabric that I got from Aline in France pocket. Here is an image of freckles running into an angel. The, the bushes parted and the face of an angel looked through. So I think that pretty much tells you it's a love story. To all good Irishmen in general and one Charles Darwin Porter in particular. So I tried to save as much of the paper or the original book as possible. Just a little tag here if you wanna label your book, contents. A little bit of wallpaper from Ruby and Pearl XO. Thank you, Heather. Um, oh, actually, I love this page because it has characters. So here's Freckles, a plucky waif who guards the limber lost timber lease and dreams of angels, the swamp angel, and then certain characters who actually help take care of them and watch over them. And actually, that's what these pictures are. So this, I think, is his boss. And this family represents the family and the motherly figure that pretty much helped take care of them and adopted them him adopted him as their own. Um, book pages, vintage children's workbook pages. Just did a little die cutting, a Russian to English dictionary and um, children's um, language book. My favorite French um, learning booklets or um, school booklets because they're so buttery soft, amazing. And then just a little thank you card that I repurposed and backed with some ledger. Some of that newsprint. Um, I love the colors, how the dye. I actually die cut some of Ruby and Pearl's um, snippets that I have from her wallpaper that she sent me as part of our paper swap. And I just love how that came out in accents. So I threw in a little yellow silk just to accent the yellow rose there. Some illustrations from the book, which I did keep. Again, this is meant to be an art journal, so I want you to fill your pages with your doodles, your sketches, and that's why I included in this ephemera pack 
this little booklet, which actually originally had these, these um, botanicals in them. I repurposed it and stitched in there for you a whole bunch of ledger, um, cold pressed and acid free papers for your sketching. In theory, you could rip these out just like Sheena from Luna Rosa used to do where she would sew things together so you can rip out pages. And I might've started one already for you. And then just put them over book pages that have wording on them. Or if you want to use them as, as layering pieces and accents. A lot of the layering that I've done here, I've been influenced by Ira from, uh, Irina from Meditative Scrapbooking, just because I've been watching her uh, gratitude and abundance journals over and over because I love them. So like more of the uh, children's handwriting pages, but with some a little bit of die cuts just to influence or to help um, get your your artistic ideas flowing. And of course, I couldn't help but throw in some very vintage or antique, in this case, um, receipts. Um, this one is from the UK. Um, I just received a pack um, last night, actually, and I've already started using the ephemera from it. A little bit more. So a French botanical book page from Aline, other side of the Russian, um, English, and the workbook. Great risks taken. I love this chapter. There's so many stories interwoven in this, this uh, um, storyline. I love it. Coffee dyed paper. That's the end of the first signature. I did put in a few of these vintage uh, French, excuse me, French embroidery patterns that reminded me of botanicals. One, because I was going to originally do some embroidery for you, but two, just because if you aren't going to do any, they do make great layering pieces. And of course, some French ledger paper. I couldn't help myself. Decoupaging, instead of decoupaging napkins, I've used tissue paper. This one. Um, just to give you an idea that you can also use this as your pressed flower book journal. But this comes out, so if you want to replace it with something or do a little journaling, that will be perfect. just wanted to leave that leaf out there saying hi. Um, some of the original book plate from that Wildflowers pressed book, altered book from the UK, and layering of, hmm, is this Russian or Czech? A Czech Czechoslovakian, um, was it a play, a ballet, or I forget now. I get so much ephemera from friends all over the world that I'm forgetting who I'm starting to get things from, especially here at the hotel. Some of that ledger paper. Oh, and this is actually a glassine envelope. I was gonna fill it with some dried flowers for you, but I thought I'd let you pick some or let you really do your own thing. I didn't want to make this Maria's art journal. I just wanted it to be as a blank art journal just to inspire you, but to have some inspiration. A little dried flower that I picked on my walk uh, just the other day and a little more French botanical and then the, the uh, negative from one of the die cuts. Oh, and there's a couple pages of this Norwegian a recipe booklet and it's for fruit salads or fruits so I tried translating some of it but it, it sounds really good and kind of healthy so I figured botanical keeping in line with a maybe a vegetarian diet um, a 1909 magazine page it's actually an American uh, magazine that I got off of eBay I think oh and this is my favorite children's um, workbook. You'll see it in the next book for the Bobsy Twins, but it's early 1900s, First Journey, Journeys in Numberland, and they just have the best map. One of the book plates from Wildflowers, and this is also from Ruby and Pearl Exo's digital kit, and Ida in her Abundance and Gratitude journals, she actually did a lot of stacks of just note papers, and I loved how loose and casual that was. But because I didn't want to make this my journal, what I did was I left it loose and stacked. So I gave you some of the images from um, Heather's 
digital kit, and then you can actually use the back to journal on. But organic this looks here. Let's see, book plate. This is that you can play with as you're layering. Floating die, sort of re represent one of the pressed flowers you might end up putting in here. So you'll see a lot of the original um, terms from Wildflowers book. I love the black and white. I just really, really love black and white lately. Of course, the French ledger paper. And then I added some French botanicals in there. And this is actually a French embroidery picture that Aline sent. But the, the colors, I just, even though it's all mostly black and white, I really wanted to add some pops of color in here. I just love that. And actually this came from a um, Gerber daisy that I have in the room. It's actually right here. I don't know if the camera will pick up. And some petals started to fall, so I just let them fall. And hopefully they'll be dry by the time the new owner gets them. But this page is actually kind of bittersweet or sad, but the angel is coaxing the freckles to wake up and she's saying, it's your turn to please wake up. But he's just in the middle of his forest there. But it's so loving. It's my mending tape on them, but wherever I'll, as I find them, I will have to probably repair them, especially if I accidentally got any glue. But I'll go back and repair them if you want. But grungy is good. Look at the sweet dolls. I don't know if it'll show here. Sweet dolls. Writing. This is a very fragile antique French um, photo holder from a scrapbook and a vintage postcard. The, the photo scrapbook um, picture holder is actually from Marie, a French manufacturer. I asked her to find the grungiest, because she's an artist, um, papers that were literally falling apart and she sent me a nice, um, very antique pack. So you'll be seeing that in some of my one of the book pages, just some layering to show you. You could keep it nice and simple or as dramatic as you like. I don't know if you know Lulu Belou, Lulu Labou, I'll flash her name. She's a French mixed media artist and she works a lot with botanicals on her YouTube site and her colors are quite dramatic. She works with Lily, she works with, um, what is it, Orchid orchid um, flowers and she'll just press them and spread them between two pages. It's the most dramatic thing you've, you'll ever see. So imagine one of these flowers here um, that I have in this vase and then as it dries she just spreads it across a page like that. It's pretty dramatic. I don't know if I'll be able to do that but I think that's why I bought the flowers so I could try it in one of the art journals that I'll be making. More of Heather's digital. Some of the book plates from Wildflowers, terms. Oh, uh, this is some handmade paper that I purchased. I can't remember from who, but I'll, I'll include that in the description. But I added a layer of Heather's uh, vintage wallpaper, had some yellow roses on there. And then these were dried little dandelions that I picked on my walk again near my university and I followed the instructions from the wildflower book on how to lay out your flowers before pressing them and this time I didn't I didn't um, break too many petals off but I like how that turned out and then a little bit of stamping from sample designs and I did include the envelope for you and a little wax seal that I got from the ephemera pack that Heather sent me the little um, antique tin can or tin um, cigarette holder, I think it was what it might have been before, but like how that turned out. So just examples of what you can do with your art botanical layouts. I mean, you could gesso these pages. This grid actually right here is washi tape for you. And I just wrapped it around a couple times and it's a removable sticker. Added some buttons and some of this um, traditional journaling cards that I got more on the Japanese style, but I love this brand. I forgot the brand. 
I can't even tell you <laughs> what being in a hotel does to your mind. Your your mind is a little bit all. This has some more over. <laughs> I, I really thought I was only going to use a few of Heather's images, but they're just so pretty. Look at these. Even if you don't get to pick or press any flowers in here, or if you're just learning how to sketch or doodle or paint, I think having these types of images, at least for me, I like to practice with good <laughs> sketches. I'm not good at um, coming up with my own sketches. I need something um, right in front of me to be able to copy or sketch from. But anyway, those look really good there. And then here's how not to press your flowers. I did this before I got the read through the Wildflowers book again, but this is a little bit of chamomile petals, and I didn't lay them out before I put them in the book, and I forgot, and I, I covered this while I was working in, in the journal, and I didn't lay them flat perfectly, but they still look pretty. And I just backed it with one of these journal cards that I just showed you. But layouts could be so simple. A little bit of coffee stain paper for this one. Some more wallpaper. I think this is from Jubilee Flea. This is actually uh, a floating journal card where I added some of the petals from the flower from the Gerber Daisy. And on the back is actually a sweet quote about what girls girls are like apples on trees. I won't read it until in full, but you could pause it or for the person who buys the journal. So this will be on Etsy. So I'll put a couple pictures on there, but I'll, I'll just refer to you, you to this video if you don't see this video first. More of the check um, uh, ticket to the theater and this newsprint paper. Some more stamping from the sample designs. I got two of her botanical stamp sets and her numbers sets. And I wanted to go crazy in here for you, but I thought, oh, but it's not my journal. It's not supposed to be a fully decorated journal. Um, more of the vintage ledger. Seriously, I need to print everything on leg vintage ledger papers, and I need just vintage botanicals in almost every journal now. This is actually a charcoal sketch that I made because I saw Sam's stamp. And just like I said, some, I just need something to look at to practice from. Ellen Martin designs and some vintage ledger and images. Oh, and uh, Sam Poole has these botanical dyes or, yeah, botanical dyes. I have it in, in this green khaki and the pink, the new pink one that she has. And I love just dripping them on there because it actually mimics really patina papers. So you might see some real patina and maybe some fake patina or pages where you can do your own layout I mean you could take anything you could take any flower and really just dry it in fact I'm gonna deadhead one that I have right now and you could just either paint that or press it anyway I'm rambling I need to keep keep moving keep moving through a little bit more handwriting from one of the vintage ledgers that I received. And then die cutting, stamping. Oh, and here's the one embroidery piece that I did want to do for you in here. It actually is embroidered with string that you guys love to wrap your beautiful packages in and papers. This one might be from Jubilee and Flea or something. Or maybe is it from UK? But anyway, I did a rosette embroidery and just some traditional stitching and Lazy Susan stitching over some vintage fabric from Junk Sister, wait, Junk Sister Journals and some stamping from Sam Poole's, one of her uh, botanical sets, and just some ledger paper so that you can write. Or I could have moved this over here just to make it a little easier to write. So you'll notice the book is laying flat just because again of that hollow spine and um, using a little bit more of the traditional book binding, even though I used fabric instead of the muslin um, to bind to secure it to the spine. Oh, another one of these um, dried herb flowers that uh, I picked up.
An angel locates a tree. So another full chapter from the book. I mean, if you do gessoing and you keep your pages lighter, you don't stack as much. You could do a lot of sketching and a lot of painting on these books. Let's leave the past behind Walk with me There's something else we need to find Say you'll go, don't make me wait There's no need So you can definitely add that, but I love just the very vintage look, look of this book, especially how it might look on your on your book rack or your bookshelf. But that's the second flip through. I'm gonna try to do one that is really slow here, but I'll get that loaded for you and notify you on Instagram. Thanks for joining me and supporting and for being so patient while I live in this hotel. Take care. <laughs>